Hey everyone, this is Alex Smith with Remax of Reading, your Reading and Burke's agent and my honest agent. Um, I am really excited today because as a landlord, I know what it's like when you're considering selling your Burke's home thinking, I have a tenant and this property is, is been a headache for me or this property is just, it's time. It's time to let it go, but I have a tenant. How do I go about selling a property? Am I gonna have to wait till this tenant decides to leave or that their lease ends for me to sell it. In fact, you don't. So let's talk about how to sell your house with tenants. And I'm gonna include roommates in this because there's some stuff about that in here that I just wanted to fill everybody in. So in Pennsylvania, things are much different state to state. So you wanna look at Pennsylvania and that's what we're gonna do today because uh, that is my market. So the lease, whether it is written or unwritten, remains that is the biggest thing so if you have a year lease from may to may and you end up wanting to list in january the tenant has a right to stay there until may unless evicted prior so keep that in mind if you have a year lease and it's written they have until the end of their term to stay unless they were evicted prior if it is unwritten and they've been there for a substantial amount of time they still have a right to be there and it actually elongates the process so if you have a roommate or a family member get something on paper saying that they have a right to be there and if the property were to be sold or if the property were to be going into foreclosure they have to get out within this amount of time because if they don't have a written lease they have rights still in Pennsylvania. I just had a situation like this in Fleetwood near Kutztown and Long Swamp Township. So the, the owner of the home had two people living in the home that would not leave, even though they were not paying rent, they were family members, were not paying rent, would not leave even though she said that she wanted to sell. It's a really, really difficult situation. I'm not going to lie. But at the end of the day, there was no lease written. So she had to get the court system to enforce this the same way you would with an eviction, except the rules are written in the, in the lease in an eviction, a regular eviction with a regular lease. The rules are at least written that, you know, they give up their notice to quit sometimes. Or the eviction process is once we say at the end of the month you have to get out, you have 60 days to get out. Without an unwritten lease, there's no rules. So keep that in mind. If you have roommates and you may be looking to sell in the future, get them on some sort of paper lease. Just pitch it to them like, hey, man, this is something that my financial guy just said I had to do to write off the, the income or, or defer the, the maintenance on here. Just make it real simple. Be ambiguous. Um, so if you have a written lease, you want to know how long is the lease for, when does it end, and does it revert to a month to month, to month if it isn't already, and how much is the lease amount. If the lease amount is less than what a buyer would be paying, it may be advantageous to you to get a, a eviction or somehow get the tenant out of the property before selling because if the buyer's paying $1,000 a month for this house and you're only collecting $700 a month in rent, it's not really an attractive buy for many people, but the value for the property might be there if you haven't raised your rents. Um, it might just not match. So the second, second thing and the second tip I'm going to give you is to open a dialogue with the tenant. Have a conversation with them. You want to try to do this outside of the court system if possible, even if that means putting a little bit of money on the line to get them out of the house if it's a contentious situation. If they're in a year lease, you want to establish with with them if i sold this property are you looking to stay or are you looking to head out because i need to know when i'm advertising the property whether you're going to be a tenant for them or whether you're going to not be a tenant for them so that the buyers coming in have an idea of what to expect so if if they leave if will someone will someone buy to live in it or are you just cutting your market to someone that's willing to rent it and the biggest thing is, will they allow showings? So will a tenant allow showings in the property? A lot of people in the past couple of years have been claiming that they're sick, that they can't allow people to come through the property. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot of truth in that, but I think, you know, there's always a, uh, someone that blends the line a little bit when it comes to that. So I think that you want to open the dialogue to make sure that you can definitely get people through there because I've seen enough situations. I just had one down 
in Sinking Spring where the tenant was not allowing people into certain parts of the house. So you need to make sure that they can go through the property just like they would if it was vacant or if you were living there. You want to make sure they're not restricting portions off. Um, you want to make sure that they're keeping it in good condition. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to this. Open a dialogue with the tenant, do a walkthrough with them, and have a conversation. Hey, are you looking to get out of here? Because you know we can help you out getting to the next place, but we are looking to list this property for sale. And they should be one of the first people to know because it is their home. You know, you want to be empathetic to that, but at the end of the day, you do own the property and have the right to sell it. So it's good to be aware. It's much easier to do this without the court system than it is with the court system. The court system elongates the process. So any way that you can help the tenant work to their next step, if you wanna list the property and market it to buyers in general and not just people that wanna be a landlord, you need to, to help that tenant get to the next step. Obviously there's a line you don't wanna cross. It's not your job to find them a place, but um, you do wanna help them get to their next step because if they've been a good tenant for you, I think that's just right. So how we promote the listing is going to be really critical to what we price the home at. So if you imagine, I've done this in other videos before, this is your market. Say half of that market is people that wanna live in the home and people that want to rent out the home. So if you have a tenant that's on a year lease and you're really happy with it, maybe you want to wait until it moves to a month to month so that you can market to this whole pie because say in may the rent it switches to month to month if you tried to list in february when i'm filming this video um you know you're only hitting half of this you're only hitting to the people that want to rent it out and then maybe move in it or have that flexible timeline there is a few people out there like that property in Sinking Spring. I, I found a couple like that, that that wanted to rent the house out for a little bit and eventually move in. So they opened up a dialogue with the tenant as to what they wanted to do. There was a lease in place on that property. So um, it's a lot. It's a lot to consider when you're pricing the home, because if we're only marketing to half of our market, you know, maybe even less the amount of land people that want to be landlords you're obviously gonna get a reduced price because now you're looking at investors, looking at investment prices, um, which is a little bit reduced than the common buyer that's going to live in the home. So the last tip is, does the price and the rent um, make sense? So like I said before, if a buyer's gonna buy the home and most likely finance it for $1,200 a month, let's say, and the rent is only bringing in 800, it's not showing an attractive scenario. So in that scenario, it may be better that you don't have the tenant and we just market to this whole pie rather than just half of the people. So keep all this in mind. This is how to sell your house with tenants or roommates. Keep it in mind here. If you don't have a written lease, get that written. Get it in paper and I can send you a copy if you need help. If the lease is there and it is written, it exists. You wanna know how long and when's it to? Is it a month to month? Is it a year lease? How much is the rent every month? Does it make sense with the price of the home and what someone would probably finance it for? Is the tenant staying or are they going? How big is your pie? Who are you marketing to? And how's that affect your price? Open a dialogue with the tenant. That is my, if you take one thing away from this video, it's open a dialogue try to work to a conclusion without getting the court system involved. It'll save you a ton of time, it'll save you a ton of money, and it, it will make everybody feel a lot better about the scenario. So if you have any questions for me, reach out. Uh, I've had to help landlords with this plenty of times and every situation is a little bit different in Burps, a little bit uh, different depending if you're in the city of Reading or if you're in the suburbs or uh, lower Heidelberg. So please reach out if you have questions about selling your home with tenants or if you have roommates and you're considering getting them on a lease, reach out to me. I'm happy to help. So thanks guys, this has been Alex Smith with My Honest Agent, uh, your writing agent. Have a great day.